Hello, I'm Dr. Francis Price, and this is a case of DALC, Deep Anterior Lamellar Keratoplasty. It's a corneal transplant where we spare the inner layer decimase membrane in the endothelium. Now this cornea has already been cut with a femtosecond laser that actually gave us a zigzag incision. So that is essentially a tongue and groove like we have in carpentry so that the edges of the donor and recipient stick together more completely and more firmly and strongly. And we've started a small little tunnel into the cornea that we're going to remove with a small needle. And now this is a blunt needle that we're pushing it in a little bit farther. And the whole purpose of this is to get into the tissue of the cornea, the stroma, and next we're going to inject air. And when we do this, the cornea will turn white. And the purpose of that is to expand the tissue so that the very back layer, which we call decimase membrane, will be separated from the rest of the cornea. So we're going to inject another uh, syringe full of air here and we'll put more air into the cornea. The first one didn't detach that membrane and that time it did. And when it did you could see the bubbles go out more deeply in the tissue and out past the area where we put our reference marks on. So now that we've created the detachment of decimase membrane we're going to remove the anterior portion of the cornea and then the next step that we'll do is we'll make a small incision in the central part of the remaining cornea and we'll take that down to the bubble. Now before we do that we're going to shine a light on the eye and this is a technique that we actually came up with at Price Vision Group to verify that we actually have a bubble formation there and it actually gives us a kind of a reverse movement of the inner reflection compared to the outer reflection. And this verifies that we actually have a bubble that's formed between the inner layers of the cornea and the outer layers above. So here we're going to inject a small needle and we're going to then inside of the bubble inject a viscous material. We call it viscoelastic we use this periodically inside of the eye to either maintain shape because it's thick or to protect the inner layers of the cornea. And here we're doing it so that when we make this incision into the bubble, the thin membrane doesn't come up too quickly and become ruptured or cut on the blade that we're making the incision with. Now once we've made the incision, we're going to take our scissors and cut through this outer layer that we want to remove and the inner layer that we're keeping that very thin membrane it's about 10 to 15 microns thick we're going to leave that in place that has the cells on the cornea that keep it clear and actually the most important ones that we have to worry about losing with rejection so if we keep this layer the chance of rejection is markedly decreased in people. So we're trimming off the outer layer called the stroma leaving that thin membrane and you can see the edge of the cornea the cut that was made with the femtosecond laser. This has actually give it, give, given us a step or a zigzag incision. Now because we have the patient's own inner layer we're going to remove the inner layer of the donor cornea. And in case that inner layer breaks, as it sometimes does, we don't remove this from the donor until we're all ready to place the donor. So the donor cornea goes right on top of that thin inner layer. We're going to suture it in place with tiny delicate sutures. You can see the inner part of the zigzag incision there. And once we suture the new cornea in place on top of the inner layer, the two will bind together firmly. And when we examine these patients postoperatively with our microscopes, it's very difficult to tell the difference between one of these surgeries and one that's actually a full thickness where we used all thicknesses of the donor tissue during the transplant. It's very important that your surgeon is experienced in doing this because you want to make sure that the suturing's done well 
and that there's good apposition between the thin inner layer and the new outer layer.